Hi, uh, today I'm going to talk about bullwhip effect. Uh, this is a very well documented phenomenon in supply chains, but I'm going to use a tool called Systems Dynamics to explain this effect. Uh, the presentation has been divided into two videos, so request please look up both the uploads. Uh, so what is bullwhip effect? It is obvious uh, where, this, where this term came from. It's actually uh, a whip, a uh, person holds the whip at one end and whacks it. You see a very small movement at the point at which the person is holding the whip. You see really wild swings uh, at the free end of the whip. And uh, pretty much uh, you see the same stuff in supply chain. It's quite interesting. Uh, imagine a supply chain where you have consumers, uh, customers, manufacturers, and suppliers. You see a ever so slight movement here. Just a twiddle here at the customer's point, at the consumer's point, you see a slightly wilder swing at the distributor. A larger disturbance or a larger swing at the manufacturer and astonishing large at the suppliers. This kind of disturbs the supply chain no end. Um, the term bullwhip effect was first coined by was coined by Professor Howley of Stanford University in 1997. But the phenomenon was really originally explained by MIT professor Jay Forrester. Uh, Jay wrote uh, a paper which I think was really far ahead of its time. In 1958, it was published in Harvard Business Review, August 1958, where Jay lucidly explains this effect and the other issues that plague supply chains. All, all his explanations and all that he came up in that paper are still pretty much valid in any supply chain that you look at today. So if you haven't read that article, I really recommend that you go ahead and download that article from Power Business uh, Review's website. Uh, it's, it's, it's available for a relatively small fee. Uh, Bullwhip effect is observed in all industries, even those with very stable demands, such as bread, milk, cooking oil, soaps, item of daily consumption. One would think that uh, this, this kind of cyclical behavior in supply chain, uh, this kind of sorry, this kind of uh, disturbance in the supply chain is only observed in cyclical industries. But no, you see this effect in industries where uh, the, the demand is very, very stable. Uh, bread, for instance, right? Well, you know, the, the consumption of bread doesn't change on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, Jay invented the discipline of systems dynamics to better understand and explain and manage complex structures. And uh, we attempt to use uh, the same tool to explain bullwhip effect in the second part of this video. Um, uh, business dynamics has been applied to all fields that you can imagine, from uh, economics, finance, medicine, engineering, education, government policy, transportation, you name it. So before I get into um, before I get into the model, I just want to take a little detour in explaining what models are. So uh, you know, models are absolutely critical to take decisions. Most of the time, we build intuitive mental models, and uh, most of the times, we, uh, we we go in a formal uh, formal way of writing models and doing um, analysis to come up with uh, come up with decisions. But if you look at it, the most uh, most modern models, or most models that we see around in the business, is based on a linear, very static view of the situation. So you have you have a certain situation, you have some goals, you assess the gap, and you take some decisions to plug the gap, and you hope for results. Well, it doesn't really happen because um, because really the gap always decreases because. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, you wonder, you, you wonder why the gap has not been, not been plugged. And the reason is that it's, it's a very linear way of looking at things. In reality, in reality, uh, the situation is a little more complex, right? You have some environment, you have some goals, and depending on the gaps between your goals and your, uh, between the goals and the environment, you take some actions. And obviously, the action has some side effects which impacts the environment and then you have to change your goals accordingly and also um, uh, when you change the environment right it impacts the goals for others imagine this as a, as a you know as a competitive environment where there are two 
with the two companies in an industry competing against each other. So if one were to change the price, obviously this will impact the environment and uh, the, the competitor will also take some action which also has some side effects which impact the environment. So there is a constant dynamics in play. It's more like it's more like a movie as opposed to photographs as opposed to snapshots in time. And and this is really complex stuff. And uh, you know most uh, modern uh, models don't most contemporary models don't take into account the feedback loops. Or even if they do, they're not able to capture it um, very easily. And uh, and 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 uh, systems dynamics really helps us uh, very quickly take care of. Uh, they take care of these issues by the very nature of its structure, by the very nature of its uh, concept. These issues are gapped. And, uh, how, and how does it do it? First of all, uh, systems dynamics is really working extremely hard to find out the causal link. So what is causing what? The other thing is that uh, it describes almost everything in stocks and flows. Right? Just to give you a small example, uh, you know, if you look at uh, uh, Look at the simplistic view of the supply chain. Uh, a factory produces stuff, it goes into a stock of inventory, and when you sell it, the stock of inventory gets depleted, right? Um, uh, you know, if you look at, um, uh, you know, from a, uh, if you take an example from humanities, uh, your memory, your memory is a stock, your life experiences uh, add to those, to the stock of memories, right? And uh, and uh, uh, when you have some other experiences, which kind of tend to drain out some of those experiences you have had, right? So um, uh, what the point I'm trying to make is that everything, everything, uh, whether it's behavioral or it's real structural things that you observe in business, can be described in stocks and flows and nothing else. So it's causal links, it's stocks and flows, it's feedback loops, and business dynamics capture all these three things quite effectively. Um, and um, uh, when we're going to uh, when we're going to run the model of um, supply chain to understand who they affect, we're really looking at a very simple two-stage supply chain. So we have uh, uh, so uh, we have a, we have a retailer uh, who has a warehouse in its back store, right? Just imagine there's a little warehouse sitting here. Uh, it orders from the manufacturer, so it sends orders to the manufacturer. To supply the response to this order, right? It's a pretty simple, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty simple two-stage supply chain, and uh, and uh, the, this is a screenshot that I've taken from the model. I won't go into this, try to explain the model here, but in the in part two of the video, uh, I go into explaining uh, uh, how this model is structured. 